So I want to have a look at how we set up the permissions on Android using the sample that we have for the camera component. So if you want to have a look at this uh, and under Rad Studio, if you just go and open up the samples, uh, if you have a look under mobile snippets, there's a whole host of things in here for you know, recording audio, you know, date time pickers, uh, database access, locations, notifications, phone dial, share sheet and everything. But we're going to have a look at the camera component. Now this is quite a simple application. Uh, it consists of two forms, uh, one just for using the camera component here and um, where it samples the buffer and places it onto the image on the screen here and a, a button to set it active and inactive and then just a settings page so we can see the settings on the camera. So the, the key thing really here is that um, to run this out onto Android because this will work on iOS and Android there's differences between the different mobile platforms so let's have a look at the project options and if we have a look under the users permissions so under the users permissions you can see here we've got a target here selected of Android 32 this is the debug configuration so the thing I definitely say is it's worth understanding the differences between the configuration setups here so we have an all configurations which is where you set a master to apply for debug and for release and then you have a debug one which allows you to set optional configuration settings for debug and also you can do specific configuration for release. So I'm going to go and set, I'm going to run this out onto a 30, uh, sorry, a 64-bit Android device. So I'm going to choose Android 64 and I need to make sure that the camera is enabled. Now we can see that camera isn't listed here in the top part, that's because we need to scroll down onto this dangerous runtime user approval. So what that means is that we need to say that yes we're going to be using a camera but it also means that it needs to then get runtime approval for using the camera. Now this is something that Android changed in the more recent versions so we need to make sure our camera is enabled there, which it is. So that's good. So let me update my target platform here and just make sure my device is showing, which it is. That's good. So. Let's have a quick look at the code behind so we can see how the approval is sought at runtime. So we have the component, which we all see we're going to be setting active. But we can also see here, specifically for Android, um, we have this uh, permissions flag set um, where we are getting the permissions for the camera. Now uh, we're getting the, uh, the string that's used for setting the permissions. And then when the action list is fired, we are then checking to see under the permission services if permission has been granted for the camera. And if it has, then, uh, oh sorry, if it hasn't, then we mark it as handled, tell the action that you don't need to do anything further, we're going to take over from here. And then we use the permission services to request permission for the camera. And then if that's successful it will fire through to this activate camera permissions request result. And if we go find that method. We can then see if it's been granted we're then activating the camera. Uh, and if it hasn't been granted then we're basically saying that there's no permission been granted for the camera. Okay. So that's the, the key thing really. Um, you can have a look at the rest of the code in the sample. I'm going ahead just to go and run this out onto my device. Let's just move that behind here. And there we are, we can see the applications come up. Now I'm going to hit start on the phone. And we can now see that we've picked up the, uh, the method for allowing the camera to be used. And uh, there we are, we can see our camera going off into a
So I hope that gives you a quick introduction to the setting of permissions on Android. I uh, hope that's been useful. Happy coding.